Um, so yeah, I'm really excited. Today we're going to uh, have a presentation from Heather Schubert. Uh, she is an occultist, a longtime author, really amazing uh, human being, and Rex's wife. And she is going to do a presentation for us on um, basically the person who Crowley was corresponding with and writing to on many of these letters uh, in his book, Magic Without Tears. So, um, you know, Heather, thank you so much. We're super excited to hear, you know, what sort of weird, wacky stories. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I know you guys have been talking a lot. Um, I don't know uh, where to start really, or if anybody really wants to know all this information about Anne Mackey per se. So I tried to kind of single out um, more information about Magic Without Tears specifically, um, because that's what y'all are talking about here. <laughs> um, how do I share screens? Put your mouse over it and then share. Right. Share screen. Here. Yeah. And it'll be and share the screen. this screen. One of these things, but not what's down here. Mm -hmm. Huh? Yeah, pick this and move it. Pick this and then. Oh, well, you have and stuff up already. Right right so we can close all this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we can close all this. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, so I, I assume you guys already know that um, Magic Without Tears consists of 80 letters between Aleister Crowley and his students. Um, for a long time, everybody thought it was letters between just him and Jane Wolfe. A part of that is because of the, um, the intro in one of the forewords to one of the editions of Magic Without Tears, it lists uh, letters between him and a quote unquote unknown sorer. And everybody just kind of assumed that was Jane Wolfe. Um, and then later, uh, we found that it was actually Anne Mackey. Uh, but they still didn't really know very much about her, and they um, thought it was that she was English because some of the letters that we have between them um, surfaced. Uh, there was a like the Wiser Antiquarian had a big uh, auction. They auctioned off a lot of thirty letters between Anne Mackey and Aleister Crowley that went to the OTO, um, and so we have some. I have some images. This is one of the envelopes that one of the letters came in that was delivered uh, between, you know, to Anne Mackey at Pancake House at Leverstock Green. Um, and at the time that she got this, it's postmarked in 1944, um, her and her husband had immigrated to England because of the war, which was really common during that time. Um, and she was working at Pan Pancake School. We have some of her, she was a composer, among other things. And uh, so we have some of her piano pieces on um, programs from Pancake School at that time. Uh, one of the other uh, pictures, sorry. <laughs> this one I should have showed you first is actually from King's Langley in 1943. Um, and King's, so Pancake School, Pancake House is a subset of King's Langley. And so it wasn't uncommon during that time for her to get mail at both, you, you know, for them to use both addresses. But um, this is a close up of the seal of Al Crowley's seal, um, Anka Fnikonsu. That's a nice clear picture of it. Um, so Anne Mackey got in, really became interested in Aleister Crowley and Delima uh, through Rudolf Steiner. She saw Steiner speak at a conference at Oxford in uh, 1922. And so she became really heavily involved in that. When she went back to Australia, she, her and her husband started holding classes and they co-founded the Michael Group, which is still thriving today there in Melbourne. Um, but when they originally um, immigrated to England um, in 1932, her, like they joined a lot of groups in that area. There was a lot of, um, during that time, a lot of little salons and groups that were made up of artists and 
uh, writers, uh, different, you know, different people, and they would hold little salons and that sort of thing. And her cousin, who was a writer at the time, although he's not very well known today, he didn't really make a big name for himself. <laughs> um, he, found, uh, actually I have his name, but I don't know that anybody would, uh, would recognize him, um, Walter Bryant, or, um, so, yeah. And so he ended up introducing them to all these different groups of artists, composers, writers, so they hung out with uh, people and met all these people like Virginia Woolf and G.P. Wells, who was the son of H.G. Wells. And um, there was also another writer uh, by the name of Edward Bryant. And so through these groups, she heard, she first heard about Aleister Crowley. And she was really interested in meeting him. And so Edward Bryant set up a, a meeting between them. And on March 12th, 1943, he took her to Hatchett's restaurant and introduced her to Crowley. And Crowley uh, remarked and noted this meeting in his journals and remarked at the time that uh, Anne Mackey was, quote unquote, not so bad. <laughs> um, he's kind of, he, he mostly has negative things to say about people in his journals rather than positive things. <laughs> but um, he, you know, she was really intrigued with him and she started uh, visiting him the very next day. And two weeks later, uh, she wrote him an eight page letter and they started corresponding. He wrote her an eight page letter back. Um, and then on, let's see, on August 23rd, 1943, they entered into a contract and they came to terms for a 50 letter correspondence in which he would ask questions and she would respond. And he intended to use it for a book that he wanted to call Alistair Explains Everything which later, you know, became Magic Without Tears. Um, they had a lot of, you know, reading his journals and reading the small amount of journals that we have available of hers. You can see that they had kind of a volatile relationship, which I think Curly had with everybody. Um, so it was ups and downs, and sometimes she wouldn't write to him for a while, and then he'd get mad at her, and they'd start writing again. But it's difficult to pick through the journals and, to, and the letters because he was writing so many different things at that time. He was working on the Book of Thoth. He was working on the cards, uh, the tarot card deck with uh, Frida Harris. Uh, a lot of times Frida Harris would um, take dictation and like actually pen the letters to Anne Mackey from Alistair Crowley. And uh, she, uh, you know, Anne Mackey, uh, according to Crowley's journals and Mackey uh, initiated into the OTO and the AA. And um, one interesting thing was uh, that she was contemplating, uh, he, he was contemplating her uh, magical motto. And at the same time that she was also thinking about it, <laughs> and that was August of 1943. And he says in his journal, Mrs. Mackey, I would be one with the creative force of the universe, which he converted to Latin and the, uh, the number 831. So a couple weeks later, she writes him a letter or he gets a letter from her that uh, she tells him that her motto is fiat and the letter four, which is yod. So she's producing, producing sor fiat yod which is 811 plus 20, which equals 831, which is the same number that Curly came to. So that uh, he accepted that as her motto. And from that point on, he refers to her just as FY in the journals. So in going through Curly's journals, there's a lot to weed through. You know, he's talking about different letters, different books, and the chapters to the book, some of the books are um, expressed in Roman numerals, just like some of the, the letters were and the chapters for, um, you know, Magic Without Tears ended up being. So it's very difficult to figure it out. <laughs> uh, one of the things that we do know is that the letters do not appear, oh, pardon me, they don't appear in the order that they were written in the book as chapters. But it's difficult because of all those things and going through his, his diary and everything, it's difficult to figure out which ones came 
first or what their names were. So a lot of the chapters uh, were letters that had been renamed. And some of them, or all of them, are in a completely different order than what they were received. So I compiled a list for you <laughs> of about 35 letters and how they appear in the book. Um, and the ones that have the same name. And then there's a handful of them that have a different name, handful on that list that don't, the names don't appear. So probably they were just renamed, but I'm not sure it's difficult. It would be a guess, you know, which chapter did they get renamed as? Before I read that to you, here's an image of one of the letters between Crowley and Anne Mackey. And they're talking a little bit about several different things. Um, they, you know, she's, he starts talking about a receipt here, um, in the Equinox of the Gods, etc. Down here, he's talking about the OTO. Apparently, she was thinking about wanting to start a lodge, maybe, or maybe he that was his idea. Who knows? <laughs> um, and then they start talking about this is the second page of the letter. And they start talking about the letters um, for uh, Magic Without Tears. And sometimes in his journal, he just writes A-E-E -E for Alistair Explains Everything. So there's a lot of abbreviations and um, it's a little odd. <laughs> can, can we put these two side by side, these two pictures? Right of the letter, so that's the beginning of the letter. Well, I wish I could put them side by side for you, but. I can't do that. Um, so I was just gonna uh, go ahead and read this list. Uh, this is um, my list here of how you can even see it, huh? <laughs> of the chapters as they appear in the book, uh, the letters as they appear in the book. So for instance, letter number 14 was called Selfishness and it has it, it kept the same name, but instead of uh, being chapter 14, it's chapter 66. Letter 17 was originally called Do Angels Shave? And it became chapter 57, Do Angels Ever Cut Themselves Shaving? Uh, letter 18 on the Secret Chiefs became chapter nine. Uh, letter 19, The Act of Truth, became chapter 19. Uh, so there's a few that are that way. They kept their same names, like letter 23 was on family. It became uh, chapter 52. Letter 27 on the Black Brothers became chapter 22. Chapter 12, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, letter 30 on Mother Love kept its name and became chapter 58. Letter 31 originally had several different names. At first, um, in the journal, it appeared as A dot C dot, so Alistair Crowley, and then it had Sirius with a question mark. And in parentheses, it said on my gay style. And then later, the same one, letter 31, he started to re refer to as Act of Truth. Um, the Act of Truth became chapter 19. And he also makes a note saying that that one was written for Robert Cecil uh, in his journal. Uh, letter 35, Moralizing on Meanness, became chapter 54, titled On Meanness. Uh, letter 37 was called On Sex, and in parentheses, Do You Believe in God? Question mark. So I think that one could be chapter 30, Do You Believe in God? Or maybe chapter 15 on sex morality. It's really hard to say. <laughs> um, chapter 55 uh, is letter number 39, which is money. And that one has the same name, obviously. Uh, letter 67 importance of greetings became chapter 18 called the importance of our conventional greetings etc letter 68 on golden man could be chapter 33 the golden mean maybe it's a like a typo or his writing is so hard to read <laughs> um, or maybe it's chapter 65 
which is called man. So it's tricky. Um, and I think that that's why nobody has come up with a full uh, list of the letters as they were written and as they appeared. I don't think that uh, anyone has um, in their archives all of the letters, you know, all um, 80 letters. I know that uh, yeah, in the, OTO, in the OTO archives, they have 50 or 30 of the 50 between that were supposed to be between Crowley and Anne Mackey. Um, there are a few other letters that were supposed to be chapters in the book. Uh, maybe they got renamed. It's hard to say. So letter five was on art as the path. And I, I really am surprised that there isn't a chapter on art as the path because Crowley was really um, all about that in a lot of ways. Um, I mean, during the time frame, like I said, that that these letters were being written and that he was collecting letters for Alistair Explains Everything, he was also, like I said, working on the Book of Thoth. He was working on the tarot card uh, images with Frida Harris. He was working on other um, publications and he was working on poetry and plays. He was a hugely prolific writer and it was just, he had like dozens of different projects going on at the same time, but he always found room for art and for poetry and plays and that type of writing. Um, so I'm surprised that that one didn't make it in there. <laughs> um, letter number five was called why question mark first steps in train AA training. Uh, letter 13 was on pain. And he certainly had a lot of that too, physical pain. So I'm surprised that one didn't make it in. Um, or maybe it did, maybe it's just renamed. Like, I think this one is just, has just been renamed. It's uh, number 19 on clear thinking. But then there's like number 21, gnawing at the dried flesh. <laughs> you should come over here and see with me. <laughs> Uh, number 26, The God Within, is another one that I think just appears in the book under a different name. Uh, letter number 29 was called The Angels in Trouble. Number 32 had, uh, had been called How Can a Yogi Ever Be Worried? Question mark. And during that time period, he said that he was, he was flunking Sora Fiat Yad because he hadn't heard from her. And so he was mad and he was kind of throwing a tantrum and he finally heard back from her. And the reason he hadn't heard from her was because her husband had collapsed. And, um, and so she was, mm -hmm. she was a little busy. <laughs> and so she came in to see him though, because he was really angry with her. And she brought some flowers with her and he remarked on the flowers, uh, the type and the color and the eight and 90 rules of art in his uh, journal. <laughs> um, let's see, chapter 36 was called Why Worry? And in, in parentheses, it said uh, Yogi Dead, question mark. Um, but I think this is the funny one. <laughs> chapter 50, is it, what is it, 61? Chapter 61 was, the letter was, or not chapter, sorry, letter 61 was called Kung Fu. And um, we couldn't figure out if there was any chapters on martial arts or anything mm -hmm. like that. It might have been a screenplay for the, uh, for the David Carradine TV show. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. He was working on lots of different things um, at the same time. So that's entirely possible. So you guys... Uh, until 7 30 right so yeah i mean so that's good well, i wanted to cut it so I, I didn't want to like go over time. you can go as long as you want heather oh <laughs> yeah totally cool we're enjoying it <laughs> well i don't know what else i can really tell you um i can tell you a lot about Anne, but <laughs> yeah does anyone so, have any questions maybe, oh yeah or? does anyone have any questions i mean it would be great to get some background about Anne. well um was she a successful Prohibitioner of AA? Did she did she rise high in her ranks and 
Yeah. It's hard to say. Um, he doesn't comment too much about it. He talks about in, in this letter here, he's talking about asking her if she wanted to find, you know, three or two or three other people to create an OTO lodge that he would advance her to the seventh degree in OTO. So I don't think he would do that if she hadn't been doing the work, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think he would be putting too much stock in their letters and stuff either. He was very, he was brutal. And some people, he was just like, they're stupid. This is ridiculous, you know what I mean? <laughs> so <laughs> there, was, there was one time, um, let's see, I have a quote here. Uh, so he, this is a quote actually from Magic Without Tears. And this is from one of the letters between them. And he says, I'm arranging to send you the official papers connected to the OTO, but the idea that you should meet other members first is quite impossible. Even after affiliation, you would not meet anyone unless it were necessary for you to work in cooperation with them. I'm afraid you still have the idea that the great work is a tea party. Contact with other students only means that you criticize their hats and then their morals, and I'm not going to encourage this. Your work is not anybody else's, and undirected chatter is the worst poisonous element in a human society. So he, he writes a lot about like her desire for companionship uh, during her travels on the path. Um, and, you know, at one point he says um, that Mrs. Mackey here, it's difficult to follow her suspicious mind. She craves company on a path solitary in essence. And then he wonders if maybe she was born of twins. And he says, even if she were, she will have to die alone. <laughs> so he's got like exclamation points, you know? <laughs> it seems like he was talking about the AA there for, I mean, the for solitary the path. path is, yeah. But he's kind of mixing it up with OTO though. Because at that time, I think um, it wasn't as social of an order as it is now. It's changed mm -hmm. a lot over the years. So obviously. So, all, I mean, everything has, but, you know, um, but uh, there was another letter between them where he tells her the importance of uh, keeping everybody's name secret and not divulging, um, you know, the membership of who was in the AA and who's not, or who's in the OTO and who's not, and he's talking he goes back and forth talking about just like who's in um, the groups or, you know, if it, you should never divulge the name of another member. And then later in that same letter, he tells her that um, Rudolf Steiner was a member of the OTO. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I think that's because, um, you know, they talk a lot about Steiner and um, he created a list of, you know, um, I don't even know if I can say this, Robley. Um, esque. I'm just gonna say Robley esque. He uses a completely different word that has Robley in it, like Robley essence or something, <laughs> some made up word <laughs> um, of basically insults for the Steiner group and that he gave to her. <laughs> so, um, so they had an interesting relationship, but she um, she's really uh, started at a young age. She uh, graduated at a young age. Um, she was like 14 when she graduated and she went on to, um, she was like a mu musical prodigy. She went on to start the People's Conservatorium in uh, Melbourne, Australia. And she was the only woman who was basically doing that during her time. She was running it. Um, and then it's still, it's still around. It's just, you know, they dropped the People's Cons uh, the name and they changed the name. Um, but she was, so she was just, she was really interested in art and music. And I think that was uh, one of the things that drew her to both Steiner and to Crowley. She doesn't write a lot herself about magic, but I'm hoping that um, I only have very little amount of information from, from her journals. And so I'm hoping that'll change. I got some leads out there. I'm hoping they'll pan out. <laughs> um, and I found a few other papers written about her by some of the um, people in the musical community um, in Melbourne, Australia.
and her and her husband didn't have any kids. Um, she has like a nephew that still has some of her things and uh, there's a museum that has some stuff from her and I have I think I have some pictures of her but I don't have it confirmed yet so I'm kind of uh, trying to wait and see about that but I'm hoping that would be cool to you know be able to say here she is is what she looked like so research is ongoing <laughs> research is ongoing yes <laughs> that's so interesting thank you Heather um also I was wondering like you know you mentioned that uh letter that Coley wrote on art that wasn't included um is that available to read somewhere has that been published like online or anything i really don't know um he just mentions that uh you know his his journals were very brief mostly unless he was really uh, ticked off or upset or really excited about something then he'd write more <laughs> but usually it's very brief so it would look something like you know um f why uh, wrote, you know, or sent a letter, you know, number, whatever the, um, the Roman numeral number was, and then it says on, you know, on, and he would put the name, mm -hmm. or he would say responded to, you know, letter 26 and have the name, but it doesn't give you any more information than that, really. Mm -hmm. So, um, like I said, unless he was like really upset about something. <laughs> but that's not a letter that's in like Robert's archives or anybody's in the OTO archives. It might be in that collection of 30 letters that the OTO got from Wiser Antiquarian, but I haven't seen that. Um, that's not something that I can easily acquire. <laughs> um, I don't think that they've let very many people look at the actual letters. Um, I've looked at his, jour his journals that are written in his handwriting uh, that come from, I wanna say the Warburg um, on microfilm. And I have some of his diaries that are typed from, from the handwritten which is problematic because there's no little, all there's like symbols. It'll be like, this is the symbol for Venus. This is a symbol for air and you know, things like that. So that's a little tricky uh, to go through and they're different. They don't all include uh, the same information. So if I'm looking at, you know, August 2nd in 1943, or even the date that he first met her, it's in his diary, but it's, or it's in his journal, but it's not in the typewritten transcripts of his diary. So it's all very tricky. <laughs> it takes mm. a long time and I'm still waiting through it. Sounds like a, an archival mystery. Is the answer, I guess, yeah. <laughs> um, I had another question too that just came to mind. Um, do you know if Phyllis typed up any of these letters? I know Phil Phyllis Steckler was kind of a, you know, working on publishing some of Crowley's work after, with Germer, after Crowley passed away. Do you know if she was, you know, sort of transcribing any of these, this book at all? You know, I'm not sure, actually. Yeah. Every time I see a Crowley thing that's been typed up, I'm like, did Phyllis, was Phyllis I know, right? <laughs> responsible for us? Well, she's transcribed some things, right? But she did. Um, he had a lot of people. Um, Cordelia did. Um, Frida Harris did a lot of like writing for him and stuff too. Um, it was interesting. There's interesting notes along the same time. He was, uh, he was working with uh, Mackie and Frida Harris at the same time. And so sometimes, you know, it'll say FH and FY and, um, you know, sent a ridiculous card and, you know, <laughs> and he'll go back and forth. And so it's difficult to just weed out who he's talking about too. So in some of it, you know, <laughs> but it's interesting because sometimes he's talking about the, um, the artwork for the cards or the Book of Thoth. And so it's interesting to pick out all the different pieces. That's super cool, Heather. Uh, did you need to share the screen anymore? Um, no, I think I think okay. that's all I have to show you. Get out of that mode. Yeah, it's super cool to see his handwriting. It is. I I don't know how people read it. <laughs> so it's right. a challenge. And I'm just gonna well, record. Thanks, Heather. Yeah. So yeah. So that was just a short bit, but um. Uh, there's more coming out about her re uh, soon in the Daughters of Babylon, Volume 2. Mm -hmm. There's a long article about Anne Mackey and her involvement with magic 
without tears and then um i'm also working on a book about her as well she posted the oh. hermetic.com article oh cool yeah all right thank yeah. you so much for having me thank you heather so that was heather schubert and again i'll post that she wrote this article the unknown soar um on hermetic.com so if you want to read it uh you know and we'll we'll watch for your book heather we're really excited uh <laughs> Thank you so much. That was awesome. Well, thanks, everyone. Thanks. We did it, Rex. We did it. We ended Woo! on a high note. Bye. <laughs> right. um, I think uh, Matthew has some stuff coming up. Um, he's going to be doing workshops. Astrology, right? Yeah, every other Sunday. So, um, you know, it'll be on our YouTube channel, it's on our Facebook. So, tune in for, um, you know, Matthew's great work. And uh, maybe we'll do another class again. <laughs> more selections. No doubt. This was fun. Yeah. Thank you everyone for coming. It's been an honor. Thank you guys. 93. Yeah, 93. Is with 93. Thanks for hanging in there.